The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 779 Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have an amazing lady on the show today. She's a New York-based illustrator, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Ding Ding Hu. Ding Ding, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Hi, Sheena. I'm doing great. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm an illustrator. Basically, uh, I work for uh, magazines, publications, and companies with their like commercial art. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Ding Ding, what's your cultural background? Uh, I was born and raised in China mainland, and I moved to the U.S. to attend art school at age of 22. And then after that, I chose to move to New York City and pursue my art career since graduation. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite quote, I think it's not exactly a quote, but I am strongly believing that you have to be your own biggest fan. Thanks for sharing that. And I totally agree. I mean, you know, there's times where you feel like you're all by yourself or sometimes we can be in this journey on our own and we have to be our number one fan or number one cheerleader to keep pushing us to keep moving no matter what happens. So thanks for sharing that. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I think for self-confidence, to me, it is about focused on being the best version of myself. And I believe after that, everything else will follow naturally. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And Ding Ding, what was your life like before you discovered self-confidence? I think it was not like a big moment. It was when I started becoming an artist, I spent a lot of time on social media, Instagram, and looking at all the other people. And then I think at one point, I started to feel so much anxiety and feel kind of lost about my own identity and feel like when I look at other people's level of achievement, sometimes what makes myself feel like really low. So that's kind of, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's something we all can relate to, right? I mean, especially mm-hmm. as Asian Asian uh, women, we feel like we always, we're always, or Asian families, how we're brought up, it's like mm-hmm. we're always compared to other people, whether it's in school or work life, married life, or not married life. Mm-hmm. You know, there's always something. And, you know, sometimes we have to realize, like, you know, we just have to focus on ourselves and none of that matters. And especially with social media, you know, we have to realize yeah. those are just curated pictures, right? Some of them are like edited to the T and that mm-hmm. just because you see something on a photo doesn't always mean like that's what's happening in their real life. So it's like we have to realize, you know, we see a picture, it's a beautiful picture and kind of like learn to let go of any emotions after that. And I know sometimes it's easier said than done because we all go through it, right? We look Mm -hmm. in here like their life looks so perfect, but we just have to realize, you know, we are still more blessed than most people in the world. Mm -hmm. And we just have to keep on focusing on ourselves and working on working on ourselves so that things like that won't get to us. And what was that point in your life when you realized you can go out there and be who you are today, have that confidence? What was your aha moment? So before like I started to be more confident, I think I was always relatively confident about myself during like a day to day life. But I think I had a mental breakdown at one point, kind of affected by social media, because being an artist, social media is kind of our main channel. It's like less about other people having kids. It's about you have exposed to all those amazing people doing amazing thing. And sometimes you just feel, you know, very freaking out about yourself. So I think at one holiday season, I was working through the holiday season, and I didn't get to like go anywhere. And then I just see everyone either post about, oh, their biggest achievement of the year, and then their amazing holiday, amazing vacation. And I'm just by myself in my apartment and working. And I just had a mental breakdown. And uh, that leads me to completely left social media for a short period. And after that, I started to looking for ways of like, I just feel like this is not right. I want to do something different. So that's like when I started to actually purposely trying to 
uh, looking for ways to like maintain mental health and eventually confidence. Thanks for sharing that. And then, you know, I'm glad you're able to share something like, you know, say, like you mentioned, you went through a mental breakdown because, you know, mm-hmm. it's still really like a lot of people won't be able to admit that or still think it's a taboo or it's shameful. But, you know, I think we all have some form of mental health issue, right? And I think the more we share mm-hmm. what we go through, what we struggle with and find ways to overcome it, you know, it helps a lot of people because then they realize they're not the only ones who go through this, right? I mean, you know, I'm glad mm-hmm. some of the past guests have mentioned that they seek therapy. And back then, like, if you mentioned that you were seeking therapy, people might think something's wrong with you. But you know what, if it's, yeah. help, if it's helping you, why not, right? Why not seek that help? It's there for a reason is to help you become better. And like you, for you, your way was to, you just needed a social media detox because sometimes we just need that in Mm -hmm. our lives right just to repurpose recharge and figure out what we want in life and you know because of that realization what's your life been like now so actually social media has do good and bad to me before social media i kind of didn't even think i'm that like lack of confidence but somehow social media kind of pushed me off the edge and now i climb back up and I feel like I actually look at things much different than before. I spend a lot of time exploring theories and, you know, listening to podcasts like this and kind of just was educating myself. And I think uh, over the time period, I have achieved a lot of uh, mental growth. And now I'm back on social media and I look at things like in a much more positive way a much healthier way. And I have stopped wasting a lot of time and energy on things and just thoughts that doesn't lift me up positively. And I try my best to focus my my energy on things that actually matters and actually bring me joy and self-improvement so i think to yeah to conclude i think it's that i kind of realized where do i focus my energy on and i think that was a major breakthrough Thanks for sharing that. I love how you mentioned that because, yeah, sometimes we focus on the wrong things or we have the wrong energy and energy is huge, right? Like energy flows through us and we have to learn to find ways to create that positive energy or let go of the negative energy we have to make room for the new or better energy to come in. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you'd give to her? First, I want to say everyone, you're unique in your own way and you're responsible to remind yourself all the good things about you. And then we should try to be as good as we can at what we do, be it a career or a craft or a hobby, because I think that build a fundamental way for you to build build self-confidence. You know, you're, you, you are capable of doing something and that's like something important. Uh, and do not compete yourself co- with others. You're only competing with yourself. And I think last but not least, um, I think uh, ultimately confidence would help you to give out the right kind of energy. And that kind of energy will eventually, um, in return, help you to attract things that you truly want in life. Thanks for sharing those great tips. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do and check out some of your work, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Sure. My website is called whoishungry.com. Who is actually my last name, H-U. So it's it's whoishungry.com. And I'm on Instagram, on Twitter, both uh, at whoishungry. Thanks for sharing that to our listeners. If you want to connect with Ding Ding, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Ding Ding's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Ding Ding today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Ding Ding. Thank you, Sheena. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to get your daily boost of confidence.